I don't know if this is the same Shark Software who do the steeplechase horse jump game now, but back in the 90s, this company made Steam Express, which was one of the more realistic steam train simulators of the time. As you'll see, the graphics are not as good as that photograph or this photorealistic cab would suggest. There are a lot of bugs in this. But from a technical standpoint, this is actually very realistic. I really wanted to do a playthrough of this, but I had trouble getting it to run. Now it's more or less okay. So you can see you adjust your fire bed there, shoveling coal to the particular spots in that menu there. The interface leaves a lot to be desired, actually. The throttle, or rather regulator, and cutoff positions are not marked. That might be a bug, actually. So there are a lot of things to dislike about this interface. But from a technical standpoint, this is a very realistic simulator. They have pretty much everything simulated here. And I haven't tried all the controls yet, either. Here I'm driving a King class from Paddington to Swindon. It appears they want you to do right-hand running, like the Great Western did in the old days because your driver position is on the right side of the cab. So I'm making that assumption in this. I had a lot of trouble reading the signals, though, because there are a lot of junction signals, and I didn't realize what they were when I was doing this, because that is rather old-fashioned. It's not in most of the manuals. You need a really old manual to figure it out. And as you'll see, I'll conclude this with a mistake born of caution. So I won't crash or do a spad, but I will stop at a signal that's actually clear. But I'll be out of time by that point. Here I'm building up the fire, getting ready for departure. I'm going to have the highball in a few seconds, literally. So I want the locomotive to be ready to roll. So as soon as I get the highball, or the right away, right there, I'm going to open the cutoff to 75. Toot the whistle, take off the vacuum brake there. Give the cutoff a little bit of a roll there. Unfortunately, they don't give you any indication of your cutoff position or your regulator position, so you have to guess it, which I don't like at all. I think that might be a bug, actually. I have trouble believing they actually meant for it to work that way. But I find that if you click on these areas, it will respond. So there we're crawling out of Paddington. And as I said, the graphics are as crude as they get, pretty much. They only show you signals and trees in your window there. But it is a very technical simulator, no question. You have to have your cylinder cocks open there. That's actually more realistic than Oron trains, actually. Oron trains doesn't have them simulated. Your damper is manually operated. Again, more realistic than Oron trains. Strangely, your injectors are less realistic. You can only have them on or off. You can't adjust how much water they're putting into the boiler, so you can't run with them open as easily. You have to basically switch them on and off, which is irritating. And not particularly realistic, because my understanding is most train drivers on the main line who are left driving steam today will leave the injectors or feed water pumps on an American locomotive partly open to keep up with the consumption of water. It's just safer that way. And I'm already going 40. I think this is another realism mistake, but I have the difficulty set for beginner because I don't know what I'm doing. You know. Here I have an approach signal, so I'm going to slow down almost as soon as I was going. The higher signal is the main line, the lower signal is the turnout for this particular location, entering Westburn Park. I have to be very careful about the signals because I don't really know them well. And I'll explain my mistake later. Mostly I made it. 
But I didn't go to Swindon. I only went to Old Oak Common, partly due to time constraints and partly due to my mistake. So I decided to click the damper off, let it breathe a little bit. I'm not somebody who is very good at working a damper, as I mentioned in another one of these videos, because I've never driven a real steam train. So everything I know, I know from books. So at least for steam engines, anyway. I did do maintenance work on Green Arrow when I worked at the National Railway Museum, but a lot of people can say that, actually. So here I'm putting the brakes on, getting ready for the danger signal up ahead. And in line with real-life practice, I will crawl up to the signal. I will stab the brakes here to make sure my speed is down sufficiently. And that is considered very heavy braking there. So I, I actually am losing points. There is a point system in Steam Express, actually. This is heavy braking. So I'm sort of breaking the rules. It's not full braking, though. So let the brakes off and let the train roll up gently, waiting for that signal to clear. And if I have to stop, I'll stop. But it should clear since this is an express. And they give you the countdown in yards to signal there. There we got a clear. Break off. reset my cutoff back up to 75 and open up my regulator again. Again, I think this acceleration is, even for a king class, a little bit too fast, but it's the beginner difficulty level, as I said before, so they may have made the performance better to make it easier for you. There's one of the trees, this first tree that I remember seeing. They don't really mean anything, they're just trees. Give you a little bit more of a sensation of speed. It doesn't even look like a particularly British tree, actually. You don't have too many evergreens, except for in Scotland. And that's a pretty recent development, anyway. Because the logging companies wanted them to plant a lot of evergreens in Scotland. We are not in Scotland here. If you look at the map down there, in between Westburn Park and Old Oak Common, You do have to adjust your cutoff down as you speed up. That's very, very realistic. A lot of steam train simulators get that wrong, but here it seems to be implemented pretty much perfectly. Basically, you open your regulator all the way as soon as you know you're not going to slip your wheels, and then ease the cutoff down and mostly drive with the cutoff, actually. pretty much standard practice. Now this signal is clear, but I note that there's a 45 mile an hour speed limit coming up, so I'm taking it easy. Here I have a clear for the main, but I'm still braking because I know that that is not likely to stay that way. I'm very suspicious. There's the next signal. Now this is actually a clear. Notice the higher one is cleared. The lower one is danger. And the lower one, that just means that we're not going to take the turnout. You can't take the turnout. The turnout is stopped. We're occupied. Most likely because there's a train in it and as well as the points not being aligned correctly. But I misinterpreted this as a danger because I was thinking right hand running, right hand signals. I didn't know how these were set up actually. It's not that I've never seen these before, it's just that it's been a very long time since I've studied British signaling. And I looked this up later just puzzling over what did I do wrong? And the answer to my getting stranded here is that that's actually a clear. It's just that the main is clear and the siding into Old Oak Common Station presumably is not. So anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching.